Steam engines in the first industrial revolution. Hardware in the 1970s. Software in the 1980s. Information and communications technology in the 1990s. The things that drive the world have changed over time. The key growth engine of the 21st century is none other than contents. Hello and welcome to the interview. I'm your host, Jennifer Clyde. Contents are one of the key growth engines of the 21st century. However, the copyrights to these products of creativity are not always well protected. Perhaps that is why we need the contents police and it is the Motion Picture Association, also known as the MPA, that does this. Well, today's guest is Mike Ellis, the president of the Asia Pacific region for MPA, and he has paid a visit to Korea. So stay tuned to meet today's guest, Mike Ellis. Illegal distribution of media contents is happening all the time, even at this moment. The financial losses to the film industry due to copyright infringement in 2014 were 21.1 million US dollars. However, the actual losses are estimated to be much higher, considering the rampant illegal downloading. There is an organization that is dedicated to copyright protection alongside the international community. It's the Motion Picture Association of America, or MPAA for short. Our guest has arrived, and we can't wait to meet him. Joining us today is none other than Mike Ellis, the President and Managing Director of the Asia Pacific Region for the Motion Picture Association. Hi. He is visiting a cinema complex in Seoul to see the latest hey, trends in the see. Korean film industry firsthand. He tries out the self-ticketing system, just like a regular moviegoer. That's my movie ticket. He takes a close look at even the small decor items. Ah, okay, so you can actually keep it like a souvenir. Snacking and movies go hand in hand, of course. Well, she said, um, wine? Yes. <laughs> wine. Very interesting packaging. So alcohol and soft drinks and popcorn. Perfect. He doesn't forget to check all the movies that are currently playing in Korean theaters. He has expressed strong interest in Korean movies. Is there a particular movie he wants to watch? <laughs> this place exuding a luxurious atmosphere is a special theater. It's for VIP guests and can be rented to host a small party. Let's head inside the theater, shall we? Why is it so dark in here? What's going on? Hello, Mr. Ellis. So welcome to our show. My name is Jennifer Clyde and I will be interviewing you. I've got lots of questions for you, so don't go anywhere. Stay right there. Right there. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Ellis. You're there, now you're here. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the interview. Jennifer, nice to see you. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for making the time uh, to join us, to look around. I hope you liked our little surprise. I love it. It's, uh, <laughs> it was a lovely surprise. <laughs> uh, did you have a chance to look around, um, maybe check out the other floors here? Fascinating. Yeah, uh -huh. I arrived, I had valley car parking. Yeah. Unusual. Mm -hmm. uh, don't normally see that in any country in the world. And uh, and then you come up and yeah, the great individual screening rooms of the uh, the different, the 4DX. And yes. then you've got the headphone one, mm -hmm, you've got mm -hmm. the, the Kia car one. And 
now we're in a private screening room. That's so true. I, mm -hmm. I feel very special. Yes, <laughs> this area is quite special, as you mentioned. It's perhaps for um, you know VIPs. Yeah, we thought since this is a very special occasion and we have a VIP, a very important guest joining mm -hmm. us. Uh, yes, we thought this is the perfect place. I, I feel very important already. <laughs> <laughs> so this is not your first visit to Korea, is it? No, I've been here many times. I've been coming since the early 80s. Uh, 80s? Yeah. Wow, that's a long time. So you've seen all the changes Incredible happening? Incredible changes, uh -huh. and uh, especially in the cinema business. Ah. I've, I've been involved in this business now for 15 years, so even over a short space of time, there's been mm -hmm. a lot of changes, and uh, you know, the cinemas have just got better and better, and there's more choices for the consumer. Definitely. International and Korean films, yeah. of course. Yeah. This seems to be the perfect place for our guests. Popcorn. Popcorn. And some drinks ready for you. <laughs> the interview of our special guest at this perfect location begins right now. The MPAA's history can be traced back to about 100 years ago. The early 1920s marks the beginning of the golden age of Hollywood, and an organization was founded to counter the government threats of censorship. The members of the MPAA are the top six major film studios in Hollywood. The MPA, with its operations based in Washington, D.C. and Los Angeles, has four branches and has partnered with content protection organizations in over 30 countries. The MPA provides assistance in film distribution and promotion in partner countries and plays a diplomatic role to advance the global film industry. One of its main focuses is on copyright protection. Together with governments and related international organizations, the MPA plays the role of Global Contents Police, tracking and blocking illegal download sites, proposing bills to ensure copyright protection, and more. Now, it's been nearly 100 years uh, since MPA was established. Have the key tasks undertaken by the association changed over the years? Oh, well, they've changed in 15 years since <laughs> I've been here. Um, I mean, how have they changed? I mean, uh, could you tell us about the new tasks that are uh, undertaken? Yeah, I think when I was bluntly brought on board, we had a huge physical disc problem mm -hmm. uh, that was emerging with manufacturing taking place. One of the first raids that we were involved in in Hong Kong involved 44 production machines um, and 44 million discs were seized. Um, and they were being not only used in Hong Kong, but exported overseas as mm -hmm. well. Um, and we found that organized crime was involved and, um, it, you know, it's a different type of operation. Um, now, you know, nearly all our operations involve online investigations. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then on the, what we realized was, you know, there, there's, there's two arms to this. One is the um, demand mm -hmm. that customers have for the product and the other uh -huh. is the supply. And you have to be addressing both of those. In the old, old days, uh, we just dealt with the supply and not really thought too much about the demand mm -hmm. and you know and we listen to why people steal content why do they actually go and get this and you know we heard a lot about well because you don't make it available it's too expensive it's not of the format I like mm -hmm. um, and, th and those you know are excuses they're not valid reasons to steal something mm -hmm. but having said that you know uh, the product today is more available um, in more formats than ever before at a price point that can meet you know, every consumer's expectation, and often in a time frame um, that it's hard really to complain. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, here in Korea, you know, you, you have um, uh, a super VOD that comes out during uh, the cinema screening. Uh -huh. um, it's one of the first places in the world to do that. Um, and in other markets, you know, such as China, uh, where you can't get all your products to the cinema, then you're bringing it online, working with the likes of a Sohu or mm. a Yuku um, or a, a, an Alibaba. Um, and so, you know, the, the, the market itself changes. And our role um, changes in terms of trying to drive a message, uh, doing some educational work, uh, capacity building, mm -hmm. uh, working with governments to understand what the issue is in that country, because every country is different and relationships, um, hopefully putting people together so that they can be, have a more comprehensive network around the, the region and around the world. Uh -huh. um, and, and so, yeah, the role has, has certainly changed since I came on board 15 years ago. <laughs> and I'm sure by the time I leave, it will have, have changed again. But each year, 
you know, we, we, we do sit down and we do look at where the problem is, how do we deal with that problem. And throughout the year, if something emerges that we've never seen before, mm -hmm. uh, then we look at how we deal with that. You know, right now we're, we're looking at how um, mobile apps can facilitate piracy and how do you uh. deal with that? Um, and so that's the latest sort of trend that we're looking at right now. So it sounds like your job is getting even more complicated. Each year it's getting more and more complicated. There's more to do, uh, more to take care of. And actually in Curie there were uh, these small places where you could actually, oh, well, worldwide I guess, where you could rent videotapes and DVDs and now it's streaming. Um, it's a lot easier to get your hands on things these days, of course. It's. Um, on the, on the positive side, it's mm -hmm. much easier legitimately to get the content. Right. Um, we're making the product more available um, in the format that people like, mm -hmm, a time frame mm -hmm. they like. And, the, and I think at a good price point where it's, you know, it's seen as value for money. On the downside, it's also a lot easier for people to illegally get what they want. That's true, yes. Um, so, you know, these are the challenges that we obviously have to face and the opportunities of getting the, mm -hmm. the product out there. And Korea's always been an interesting market. I mean, I remember coming here uh, gosh, in the, the very early 80s, when on almost every street corner there was a video rental yes, store. Yes, they were everywhere. Everywhere. Uh -huh. And, you know, I, and I remember talking to my friends and people said, oh, yeah, it's so convenient. You'd walk home, pop into the video store, pick up your, well, it's a VHS tape in those days, uh -huh. uh, but eventually DVDs. Um, and those were all gone, obviously, mm. with the piracy problems that occurred here. Yes. Um, but, you know, now there's um, an awful lot of legitimate um, services available. Mm -hmm. um, showing not only, of course, the Hollywood movies, but of, more importantly, you know, Korean movies uh, do terrifically well, um, not only here in Korea, but also as an export product. Yes. So, um, you know, this is a, an industry where people like the product, uh -huh. and part of our job is to make sure they pay for it. <laughs> Which should be done. People should be paying for what they enjoy. The MPA also runs copyright protection campaigns in collaboration with various countries. One of them is the anti-camcording campaign. This campaign was designed to put an end to the widespread illegal recording of movies in theaters using smartphones and compact cameras. Together with the staff at cinemas in various countries, they are also raising awareness of the illegality of camcording and the consequences for violations. What would you say makes copyright protection so important? Well, you know, there's a, there's a saying that the person who hired me was a gentleman called Jack Valenti, uh -huh. a very famous figure in American history in terms of running our association. And um, he said to me when he hired me, he said, look, if you, do, if you don't protect what you own, well, you own nothing. Um, and it's really important that, that in this day, day and age that many um, economies move forward because of IPR and the value of intellectual property. And for copyright, um, you know, it, it, it's not just showing a film at a cinema and saying, well, we've had a successful run. You have to be able to um, market and actually get a return on all the distribution models over a 50 year period or a 70 year period. Mm -hmm. Um, so many films, just you know, because it may appear successful at the cinema, um, won't result in that film breaking even. And at the end of the day, um, you know, it's really, of course, it's it's really important that the films do make money. Um, the companies I, I work for are publicly traded. Mm -hmm. and they have responsibilities to shareholders, and they're they're here to make films that make money, um, and make money for their their, their company. Um, but there are many filmmakers who. Um, or either you know, receive grants from governments to make money or individuals to make money. And there are many filmmakers who pursue a more sort of artistic slant. They, they look more towards um, the art film festivals to get their products out there. But you know, the, the, the key for the studios I represent is that this is a business. Mm -hmm. It is about, of course, making great product that people love and the art is important behind it, but ultimately these films have to make money. Mm -hmm. And they're getting, you know, they can be very expensive to make. Um, you know, you often hear of the budgets now at 250 million, and you hear of you know marketing and advertising campaigns of up to 100 million. Um, and if you release a film, you know, in a cinema, you know, on a on a global basis, you're sharing the revenue with the um, the cinema owner. Right. So even if you hear about a film where it made 100 million at the box office or it made a billion, well, you know, the st the film costs costs 350 million to make. Mm -hmm. You do the maths, and you can right. quickly work out that often the cinema alone will not allow you to recoup your investment. Mm -hmm. 
And you know, as with a once of a, a, a famous um, di director who did Black Swan, uh, Darren Lofsky, and um, you know, he said, "Look, you know, I'm, a, I'm really an art house type of filmmaker." He said, and but at the end of the day, he said, "I've got two really big criteria when I make a film. Number one, I want to make a great film. You know, I really do passionately want to make a great film. But number two, I want to make a film that makes enough money to pay back the investors." so that they will invest in me to allow me to make my next mm -hmm. film that I believe in and I want to make. And uh, I think Black Swan um, was one of those films that clearly made a lot of money was, and was also artistically, um, you know, very well received. Um, so there's also the term snack culture, which describes how content are distributed and uh, consumed very quickly these days. So would you say that it is possible to protect all the contents? I mean, yeah, I think it is. Really? Oh. Yeah, I, I, you know, you've got to be, uh, you've got to think big. Um, <laughs> you know, if I thought we couldn't protect all the content, then um, I'd find this job very demoralizing. Mm. Uh, but we have great success. Um, you know, the, the first opportunity for somebody to steal that content mm -hmm. um, is in a theatre showing, or before the theatre is even showing it. Mm. Um, and so we've worked really hard to close down that window and uh -huh. work very closely on security issues, and then during screenings. Um, you know, we've worked with um, governments and local industry to make sure that people are not only aware that camcording is illegal, mm. and if it, if it isn't illegal in a country, working with the government to try and um, persuade them that maybe legislation needs to be changed. Um, and then working with exhibitors that, to work in a partnership that, that if somebody is going to steal a movie off the screen and put it on the internet, uh -huh. then that's potentially lost customers to you as well as us. Mm. And we found that the exhibitors are, have been great partners to us. Um, now the snack culture, yeah, you know, people want it quick, they want it fast, but at the end of the day, a film is not a snack, you know, it's a meal. Right. And the best place to eat that meal is in a cinema. Mm -hmm. Another campaign run by the MPA is Thank You Campaign. Through this campaign, messages of gratitude are conveyed to people who consume contents legally. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This type of positive reinforcement is said to have been much more effective compared to the previous campaigns that advised people to stop downloading illegally. What's your first memory of watching My it? first memory? Uh -huh. Easy. I remember my brother taking me to watch a movie. And it was on a Saturday, and it was a short film at the beginning. Then there was a break, and you got ice cream, and then you watched the main feature. Mm -hmm. And the first feature that, that I saw um, was a film, Modern Day Robinson Crusoe. Um, and I watched it with my brother. I remember walking over a railway track, and I remember watching a steam engine go up to Scotland, oh. The Flying Scotsman. Um, it was only later in life that I realized my brother, who was four years older, was paid by my mother to take me to the <laughs> cinema. Um, but it was still a great experience. Um, mm -hmm. And I remember that, you know, fondly going to the movies with my brother. And I remember mm -hmm. going with my parents to watch the Bond movie. Ah. Um, you know, and I remember going to watch um, one of the Beatles movies. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and I, I think, you know, if you ask people that, you know, what's your first memory? Everybody has a moment in time. That's true. It marks it. Yeah. Um, and that's always going to be there. And I think mm. even with the younger generation nowadays, you ask them, well, what's your first memory of a movie? And they'll still be able to relate it to a cinema, going there with their friends, getting the popcorn. Yes. Um, lots of choice on popcorn, uh -huh. having the soft drinks or <laughs> alcoholic drinks, as you can get in Korea. Um, and people have that experience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are great tentpole movies that come out that people say, I need to go and watch this with my family, my girlfriend, yes. my husband. Mm -hmm. You know, my old, my old boss used to say to me, he said, well, you know, he said, you know, everyone's got a kitchen at home, mm. but people still like to go to a restaurant. Yeah. So I think that will always be here. And I think, you know, cinemas have changed um, uh, and you have this opportunity in this, this cinema here mm -hmm. of having a different experience. and. Um, and equally, you go to some of the larger screens and some of the screens you've got, one of the largest screens here in, uh, you've got the largest screen in the world here in Korea. Yeah. Um, you know, 
how do you replicate that at home? Uh -huh. How do you replicate that on your mobile it's phone? It's impossible. You, you, you know, will even never the Apple, be able to do even that. Even the sure. Apple 6S. Uh -huh. you know, they're now talking about making it smaller again. <laughs> Won't happen. You know, and even the 6S isn't big <laughs> enough. Are always, you know, to me, very, very interesting. And the cinemas continue to get better and better. So yeah. it, it, it will keep me going. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, um, it's one of the cheapest, it is probably the cheapest form of public entertainment you can get. Um, so I, I think it's still a great bargain. Mm. Pay less than $10 to watch something that costs $300 to make and market. That's true. It's uh, a good deal. Yes. Gosh, you're making me want to catch a movie right now. Yeah. Maybe we should go down and buy some tickets <laughs> and, and catch a film. I mean, I was looking downstairs mm -hmm. and there's like two films I want to see. There's a, the film, the Korean film, The Himalayas. Oh, yeah. I want to see that. Mm -hmm. um, I've read a little bit about it and I just saw the flyer down there. I'm like, oh, do I have time to see that tonight? And then, of course, I want to see Leonardo DiCaprio and The Reverend. I heard that's pretty good. Oh, yeah. it looks awesome as well. Now, I'm aware that MPA is interested in the advancement of the film industry in the Asia-Pacific region. Could you tell us a bit about that? I think um, you know, one of the most important things, it's not just about the Hollywood films. Mm -hmm. It's about films in general. When people come to a cinema, they want choices. Um, and hopefully our choices are, that we put out there is a good one. Mm -hmm. So we work on um, you know, trying to work with local industry and young filmmakers to give them opportunities. I see. Um, so we do this you know, at various um, film festivals. Um, and, and hopefully you know, the product that they're making will find not only an audience in their own country, but start to expand out across Asia mm -hmm. and into other countries across the world. Mm -hmm. But is there a specific reason or, or a special reason as to why uh, you have this particular interest in the Asia Pacific region? Um, well, I think, you know, first of all, there's an emerging middle class, mm -hmm. so there's more people coming to the cinemas. Um, and I think some of the, um, the talent coming out of here is producing product that um, is applicable across the Asia Pacific region, so mm -hmm. there's a lot of cross pollination going on. But also, there's becoming an awareness overseas um, of what you know, the Korean or, or Japanese or Chinese filmmakers can actually do. Uh -huh. So it's not just about your, your own country or even the Asia Pacific region. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, um, you know, films are dynamic, they're exciting. If you think back 20 years ago, how the films looked, you look at the, how they look now, and I think there's a, a certain spice and culture to every indigenous filmmaking uh, that takes place from Koreans to Japanese. You, mm -hmm. you know you're watching a Korean film, uh -huh. and you see aspects of that mirror across. I was, mm -hmm. you know, the other day watching um, The Lady from Shanghai, an Orson Welles film, and you see aspects of that film appear in Bruce Lee films. Mm -hmm. You see it appear in Bond films. Ah, uh, yes. And uh, I think we all can all learn from different mm -hmm. filmmakers. Yes, definitely. Could you tell us in detail what exactly MPA is doing in Korea, here in Korea? Well, we have um, an operation here that we do several things. Mm -hmm. On the protection side, we're working very closely with the Korean government and local industry. Uh -huh. um, we've um, been dealing with a lot with dealing with intermediary strategy, which is dealing with the, uh, the payment processes where people are able to get, if they're able to access content illegally, mm -hmm. if you can stop off the payment mechanism, how people are making money illegally, uh -huh then that will reduce the problem. Uh, we mm. work very closely with different government departments. Uh, we work closely with KCC, mm -hmm. um, who have been terrific partners um, around the region. They're very active in Vietnam, Philippines, Thailand, mm -hmm. um, and they have a very similar um, uh, method to ourselves of promoting and protecting the content. And then we work closely here, um, dealing with web hards with the Korean uh, Copyright Center um, and investigation units. Um, sometimes we work with the prosecutors by filing cases. Mm. Uh, we've dealt recently with um, a subtitling problem where people have been illegally subtitling movies and putting them online for people to access, um, which again doesn't respect copyright. So those cases are important. Mm -hmm. That you, know, you, you have to learn about the value of copyright and the need to protect it. Um, and, and then on the, you know, the promotion side, we've been working very closely and partnering where we can with the Busan International Film Festival, one of mm -hmm. the world's um, leading film festivals. Yes. We um, are fortunate we've been running a film workshop down there. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, that's another area where we you know, hope to do a little bit of promotion around the, the art of making the movies. Mm -hmm. All right. Can you maybe give an example um, of a content protection activity that you can cite that was successful here in Korea? 
Um, I think, you know, recently one of the, the cases we, we were involved in was um, de dealing with people taking the content and doing their own subtitling that wasn't ah, authorized. Mm -hmm. um, and we successfully brought cases around that. And again, it's Im important to respect the copyright um, and, and you know the copyright holder is the one who should be doing the subtitling mm -hmm. and then and then reselling that you know and people were doing that subtitling to attract people to their site and therefore not allowing people to get it from the legal site oh, so subtitles need to be authorized as well a absolutely uh, some people may not be aware of this I mean um, well we hope you know look the, the end goal is not to punish people it's about uh -huh. education people mm -hmm. and by bringing you know a, a number of sample cases like that we can drive an educational message to drive that 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 that, that particular aspect mm -hmm. and, and yeah that, that is a bit of a problem mm -hmm. but I think um, you know bluntly being uh, uh, interviewing with you today there's an opportunity to, to talk about that a little bit mm -hmm. um, but you know copyright um, needs to be respected at all levels and mm -hmm. that, that is just one area where it wasn't being in Korea um, in particular, um, and was detracting from our revenue. Mm -hmm. The Busan International Film Festival, celebrating the art of film and those contributing to the industry, is held every October. The MPA has been hosting a film workshop at BIF since 2012. They are providing young Korean filmmakers with valuable experiences and opportunities through the workshop. So why don't we take a closer look? Uh, the purpose of your visit this time around was, of course, it also involved uh, the Busan International Film Festival. Could you perhaps tell us a bit more about, um, you know, your work with BIFF BIF in more detail? We, um, first of all, the Busan International Film Festival is one of the top film festivals in the world from the, both the marketing side, when they uh, are selling films, but mm -hmm. also the promoting of the films around Asia. Um, and it's uh, certainly a, a great event on the calendar. We've been very fortunate um, that we're able to um, be part of the film festival by running a film workshop. Mm -hmm. um, and we do that together with um, the Busan International Film Festival Committee. And we run a, a, a short film workshop. It's about a day and a half mm -hmm. where we bring in international filmmakers and, and we uh, are able to s get local filmmakers, um, either directors or producers, to do some teaching and knowledge sharing with young upcoming filmmakers, be oh, the directors or producers. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a, a workshop and we uh, do some case examples. We do some mentoring around how to pitch a film. Mm. And then we run a small pitching competition. Uh -huh. um, and the, we have a jury uh -huh. um, and then we pick a winner. Um, and the winner, uh, the prize is, um, it's actually a very good prize. It's a prize for a, a one week trip to Hollywood. <gasps> to do a one-week immersion course in how Hollywood works, from meeting the guilds to pitching your movie to studios, oh, wow. as looking at the agents, uh, being involved in the American film market. Mm -hmm. um, and you're there together with winners from film competitions around the world. So it's a great networking opportunity. And mm -hmm. I guess the goal there is not to say, look, we do it better than you. It's okay. Take a look at what we do. Uh -huh come back and figure out what you want to do. Mm. Um, and then we also run a second prize, which we normally bring one of the filmmakers down to uh, the Asia Pacific Screen Awards, which mm -hmm. is held in Brisbane, which is an award festival that covers the whole of Asia Pacific. Um, and Korean films do very well there, and they win uh, prizes. Uh, last year in particular, we had a best actor come out of Korea, uh, mm -hmm. um, and the best uh, director got a special mention as well. Um, and so we take somebody down there as well. But it's a case of, uh, sharing a bit of knowledge and giving somebody an experience that mm -hmm. um, you can't buy. Right. Um, and so by working together, what, what I find also is that the film teachers who come mm -hmm. are, are professionals, they make their own films, and they love the ability to exchange information with the students, mm -hmm. and they love the ability to work with um, Korean filmmakers, oh, and then build um, a collaborative relationship. and. Uh, I am aware from some of the workshops we've run, we run these in, in China and Japan and mm -hmm. Korea, and that that has resulted in people purchasing the rights to some of the films being pitched. Mm -hmm. And um, I am aware that, that, work, that some of the films are in development stage right now. Do you also do lectures at these workshops, um, presentations? W look, I'm, I'm not a filmmaker. <laughs> um, I'm, a, I'm a policy guy, I'm an enforcer. So honestly, I, I'm, I normally do the opening speech. Mm. Um, I do some of the mentoring. Oh. Um, you know, pitching a film is, is, is like public speaking, mm. um, but it's got to be very focused and you've got to realize who your audience is and how you're going to get to that audience in a very, very short space of time. Yeah. 
Um, so I'm part of a, you know, I do a bit of the mentoring with uh, other professional people who know how to mentor on a film, mm -hmm. but I um, can normally teach a little bit about how, how to pitch something. I see. So you've been working together with Biff for quite a long time, and I mean, it just didn't start in the recent years, but it's, it's been quite a long time since you've been working together. Yeah, I was, I was very, very fortunate that, that I think about eight years, gosh, about eight years ago mm -hmm. now, um, CJ invited us down there to be part of um, a panel discussion about piracy. I see. Um, and, you know, I did that for a couple of years. And then I, you know, it's always useful to get that message out there. But then I figured that we'd like to try and give something back that was a little bit on the creative side, mm. a little bit different to what, just talking about piracy and stealing uh -huh. content. and. And, and so the idea of the workshop is something that we've been doing in other countries, mm -hmm. and we figured that it, it could work in Korea. Um, I worked with Hannah Lee, who did um, Secret Sunshine. She mm -hmm. was the producer behind that, mm -hmm. an award-winning film down at the Apsas. And, and she helped um, determine what type of workshop would work in Korea. Because every country, again, culturally different, what works, what the yes. students are. Uh -huh. um, and so we're not set on it has to be this format, and you have to follow this format. But the one thing that we are set on is, We'll do a pitching competition, mm -hmm. and there's a prize, mm. and somebody gets to go and do something really That's exciting. That's wonderful, right? Um, and so the pitching concept is interesting because mm -hmm. what I found in many Asian countries, it's not something that is comes naturally. Mm. It's not something you normally have to do, and so it's kind of um, fun to see people, you know, being taken out of their comfort zone uh -huh. and to have to pitch a movie mm. in front of the colleagues. Um, and I've been really encouraged by the results we've seen from that. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a f it's a fun part of what we do, but it's also very serious because, you know, certainly in the Hollywood context, you're always selling your next film. Right. Um, and I think, you know, in the film industry, it's very competitive. You've got to mm -hmm. have an edge. So, you know, I hope the experience, uh, the feedback is positive. Mm -hmm. And certainly the, the people who go on the trips so give us very, <laughs> very good reviews about the experience and um, the opportunity they're presented with to meet other people mm -hmm. and uh, to just see a different part of the world and different part of the filmmaking mm -hmm. industry. I'm curious, I mean, if you've been to Biff several times, I'm sure you've seen many uh, Korean actors and actresses and uh, um, many important people in the industry. Uh, yes, yes. yeah, yeah. Um, look, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate that you know, I, I get to meet a lot of great people all mm -hmm. on the industry side that, that, again, are faces that would never be known to anybody, mm. you know, people who work behind the scenes. Um, and I generally work behind the scenes. I, look, bluntly, I don't do many interviews. Um, I'm often the guy who tries to put the toothpaste, toothpaste back surprising. in the tube. That's surprising. I imagine you're doing um, interviews everywhere. <laughs> no, I, 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 I don't do too many. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I work a lot behind the scenes, but mm -hmm. I, you know, look, I, you know, I meet a lot of Asian um, movie makers, mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, I, I actually like me meeting the producers, the people who put the deals together. Uh -huh. You know, because this is this isn't easy to. First, it's not creatively easy to make a movie, but these people who actually have to get the financing, figure out the release pattern, get the director on board, figure right. out the actors. I mean, to me, they're the magicians who make this all work. Mm -hmm. And then you have you know these incredibly talented, you know, directors and actors and script writers and. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot more than the people you see who walk the red carpet who are behind us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the red carpet, of course, is the fun part where you see. And, and Busan is one of the most glamorous film festivals you will see. Mm -hmm. There's an incredible lineup of uh, actors and actresses, and it, it, it's fabulous. And the venue is fabulous. But behind the scenes, there are you know, other people who, who just won't walk the red carpet. They mm -hmm. get up every day, they go to work, they build the, the sets, they stand behind a camera, they get the lighting yes. sorted out, they change the batteries on a, on a camera when it runs out. Uh -huh. and these are the people who really help create the magic. Right. And but the ones that don't really get the spotlight, but yes. And then we are, and we are, mm. you know, again, as people who help protect the industry, yes. this is a good industry to be involved in, to be employed mm -hmm. in. And you know the average wage of people employed in there is above the the the, the average, mm -hmm. um, and and there's a you know there's a lot of people who depend on films being successful, mm -hmm. and also you know depend on films not being stolen so they can keep making films. Yes. Now you mentioned something about um, holding screenings of uh, Korean films in other countries, and you said that mm. Korean films are um, very welcomed, and people have an interest in Korean films. Could you tell us about that, and perhaps why you think that? Um, Korean films are so well received um, in other countries? Yeah, you know, 
One of the things that we do, uh, we run a, a, a week-long set of screenings in Los Angeles around the American film market. Mm -hmm. And it's really, th this one in particular is for the China co-production. And it's not only co-production with America, but internationally. So there are great collaborations taking place with China and Korea. Um, we also um, you know, work, uh, have worked with CJ, and we've done screenings of CJ films mm -hmm. in Washington, DC, just to raise the awareness of um, you know, the Korean culture and films. We had a, a, a great event with Korean food. And uh, you know, we, um, we do that for a number of countries. But um, Korean films in particular, you know, there's a certain rhythm to a Korean film, whether mm -hmm. it's a romantic comedy uh, it's quite heartfelt, mm -hmm. or whether it's a hard-hitting film like um, Old Boy, mm -hmm. or whether it's a spy thriller involving North Korea. Um, great stories, great execution, but uh, there's a harshness to it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I guess that's why I want to see the film Himalaya. Oh, yeah. I heard it was. I didn't have the chance to catch I it. I want to yet, see that. But I heard that it was. Uh, Do you cry when you watch films? I, Easily? Not, not openly. I deny that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you will cry. I don't know. From what I heard, I, I heard that it's a pretty. Yeah, you will cry. Most people cry watching. Spoiler that alert. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs>